In this video, I will be covering how to make your code clean in testing, concurrency, and error handling. It's always good to strive for 100% test coverage of your code. There are plenty of good testing frameworks for JavaScript, and the following principle applies to all of them. You should just use a single concept per test. So in this bad example, um, we're using the, the assert um, test framework, and this test actually is testing for three different things. You can see we're trying, trying out three different things in regards to the dates and this uh, make moment JS great again. So this is the bad way to do it. The good way to do it is to create three different tests. So now we have it handles 30 day months, it handles leap years, it handles non leap years. Before, remember, we just had it handles date boundaries. So you should just use a single concept per test. The next thing I want to talk about is concurrency. You should use ES6 promises, not callbacks. Callbacks aren't clean, and they cause a lot of nesting. Sometimes you need them, but in ES6, promises are a built-in global type. So here, you can see we use some callbacks when we're getting the Free Code Camp Wikipedia page. So we get that page, and then we have this callback, and then we have to see if there's an error, then we're going to write the file, and then there's another callback, and then we have to check on the error, and then there's a lot of nesting here. But if we just use promises, it's going to look like this. So here you can see that that looks a lot simpler. We're still getting that the page, but then we're going to use the dot then notation, the dot then function, to say what, what's going to happen after we get the page, which is we're going to write the file, and then we're going to use the dot then function again to log the files written, and then we can catch all the errors in one place, as opposed to having a bunch of places where we catch the errors. So promises are cleaner than callbacks. However, if you're using ES8, I know most people at this time are on ES6, but in ES8, async and await are even cleaner than promises. So the bad code in this section is actually the same as the good code in the last section, because it, it is good to use promises but it's even better to use async await if you can so this is how it looks like with promises but with async await it's even simpler all you need is a function that starts with the async keyword and then you can write your logic imperatively without a then chain of functions so we have the async and then we can say we're going to await this and when that's done we're going to await that and then you can just console.log just like we did before and then catch the errors down there because this is all in a try catch block. The last thing I want to talk about is error handling. Um, there's just one main thing to know about for this which is just to not ignore caught errors. Don't ignore caught errors. Logging the error to the console with console.log is sometimes not even much better than doing nothing because it can get lost in the sea of things printed through the console. A lot of programs have a lot of things logged to the prompt console, so with just console.log, you may not you may miss it. Also, anytime you have a try catch block, you need to do something with the error because that means you're you're expecting to possibly have an error. So one thing you can do instead of console.log is console.error. Console.error is better than console.log to log errors because it highlights the error in red and gives a little extra information. And these other functions, uh, notify user of error and report error to service, are not built into JavaScript. This is just showing that you can create functions that do these things, and you probably should create functions that do those things if possible. And as you can see above, you should always make sure you handle errors for rejected promises or the rejected async await functions. Okay, that's all for this video. This video is based on Ryan McDermott's excellent article on clean co code in JavaScript. Check the description for the link. My name is Bo Carnes. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and remember, use your code for good.